And I think what's interesting is I think a lot of artists play the really long game. And the really long game for artists, for me anyway, I think when I was young, I'm like, I want to be famous. I'm like, I want to make really good art. And I figure that if 100 years after I'm dead, that my work is on someone's wall and they enjoy it, then I win. Like, guess what? My that's work is going to endure, line. right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's really important to all artists is to play that long game. Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Richard Forte Presents. La la la, we're not live. We're not no. live. I was gonna say live from Sweet 16. Recorded in Sweet 16 studio, right here in beautiful, cold North Bay, Ontario. Today, it is your treat, not just mine, because we have James Fowler, the artist, contemporary artist, the one and only James Fowler is here with us. And without any further ado, James, Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Thanks for this doing this. This is awesome. This, this is fun. It's, you know, it's, it's great to be back here. Like, I, I remember being a kid and thinking like, oh, I gotta get out of North Bay. Like, there's nothing here for me, this young queer kid in North Bay. And it's like, hockey. <laughs> like, and like all the hockey, all the hockey people were like the popular kids in school. And I was like, I gotta get out of here and be art and culture. And I'm going to Toronto and I'm gonna forget you people. Uh, and then I got there and then it's, it's like the things that you hated as a kid, you sort of, everything comes full circle. And it's so nice to be back. And to see, like, I've grown up, but North Bay's also grown up. Yeah. Right? And there's like a, there's a pride committee here, and, and North Bay has a pride parade, and it's like, oh, wow, they're coming along. This is good. Um, and so it's nice to come back, uh, particularly the body of work that I'm showing here uh, is very decidedly gay. It's, it's very gay work. Love it. So tell me about this work. Where, 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 where did it spring from? How did you end up? reconnected to North Bay and then putting out this show? Uh, Tell us about well, it. Uh, there, there are people who have stayed in North Bay, right? Yeah. And there are people who are artists and work in the arts and culture people. And I got to connect with a, a few old friends and they said, hey, do you have you know work that you'd like to show? And um, uh, in 2019, I did um, um, an art residency on Toronto Island through the uh, it's the intergenerational LGBTQ artist residencies. So what they do is they take, you know, uh, five or seven uh, cohorts every year. You're invited to go, and they're different age groups. And so what happens is you have maybe a senior artist or an older artist and a younger artist, and you sort of put them all in the same space, and they're working on various projects. So it was really nice to be around a bunch of other queer artists and talk sort of critically about my work or work through an idea. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had done a residency at Elridge Acres in Bancroft, Ontario. And one of the things I like to do, in addition to my paintings of cities and things that I do, is when I go into a space, I like to see how that, how that as much as I take up that space, how does that environment have an impact on me or how can that inform my practice? And so, I was at a, in Bancroft, Ontario, I was at a local Stedman's and they had like all of this hunting stuff, right? And I was like, okay, I'm gonna fit in here. I'm gonna be here for three months. Um, and so I, I, bought a, I bought a jacket that I thought was a hunting jacket. And, uh, and I showed up at the like local bar that night and I was like, look, I got a hunting jacket just like you guys. And they're like, James, that's a high-vis construction jacket. So yeah. I was like, I have failed you. Uh, but I ended up using it because I was a half hour away from where the studio was and I kept walking back and forth and the locals while I was there for three months They were they were really generous and really kind and I would like I would I would get like five minutes out the door And somebody would come by in a car and go beep beep and like James you need a ride I'm like okay great So but the other thing I got at that local Stedman's were these hunting because it was I was there sort of at the beginning of hunting season and so I, you know, I, I grew up, I had a gun when I was a kid and I remember killing a bird and crying and I was like, yeah. I'm never hunting again. It's just not my <laughs> thing. I, I, get, I get how people might like that. But um, anyway, and so I was thinking about, at the time I was just thinking about as a, as a young gay person living in North Bay, my experience with that sort of group of people. So people who are doing like hunting and fishing and stuff like that was a, uh, a scary environment for me to be around um, because I was thinking like they're not going to accept me I'm going to be banished you're gay you can't be hang out with us or there's the threat of violence right there's that sort of toxic masculinity like you're a gay guy you're you know you're a bad person so all of this is stuff that I was ruminating on 
when I got these hunting masks and I thought, what if we take away that sort of butch, uh, we, we, we sort of release straight men of the toxic masculinity of that like need to feel the bravado. And so I thought, well, why don't I take two different cultures? So I took drag queen culture and I took hunting culture and I sort of culture mapped one onto the other. So I have all of these um, hunting masks that I've applied like drag queen makeup to the outside of them. Um, and, and then I put them in these sort of shadow boxes with fabrics behind them that are um, all fabrics sort of associated with fashion but also with hunting culture. So there's like the fox and the hound, the buffalo check, that sort of thing. Um, and then, so that was one project that I sort of developed while I was at the residency. The other project that I worked on um, sort of under this umbrella term, Yassify. Now, Yassify is a term that is used in social media when somebody puts like filters on. They yeah. like, uh, you take a picture and then, and then it's like, okay, you do your makeup or you like tickle your wrinkles off. You've been Yassify when it's like really extremely done. It's also been sort of co-opted by queer culture. It's something that is maybe part of straight culture that, uh, that has been queered mm -hmm. or, or, or changed somehow. Um, so for example, if you took like a Bass Pro Shop shirt and you and you put beads on it and you make it into a crop top and wear it that would be like you it's been yassified so i was thinking again about like this sort of culture mapping idea and i thought okay what are other where are other uh what are other environments where um toxic masculinity is sort of fostered i mean it's everywhere in patriarchy right so you're going to find it in sports you're going to find it in hunting You'll find it in uh, the education in academia. You find it in business. And so I thought, let's take a look at business. Let's like take a look at some of the things that happen in business. And I, I started thinking about um, consumer goods. I thought about um, the corporate, the, the brand, uh, branding campaigns that yeah. people go through. And I thought there's like one of the things that I find is sort of this unspoken co social contract that people have with brands is that brands will often use sort of um, subversive sort of sexual messaging, sex sells, right? So uh, you'll have these, these slogans for consumer brands um, that uh, they're kind of, they're, there's this sort of a sexy undertone and people don't talk about that. And so I thought, okay, let's take all of those brands and we'll find something that's part, very gay, that's part of gay men's culture, which are these hankies. Now, the hanky code or flagging was part of um, gay culture, I think, in the 19, late 70s, early 80s. Okay. Um, and what it was, it was a way for gay men um, to signal to other gay men sort of the particularities that they're into. Like, do I, am I a pass, am I a top or a mm -hmm. bottom? Uh, so they would wear these different colored hankies in their back pockets. Um, it sort of went by the wayside sort of when um, sort of HIV AIDS came through, uh, that uh, epidemic happened. Um, and so, but recently it's had this sort of resurgence with artists and sort of that sort of discourse on sort of queer art or queer art history or, or queer history. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought, let's, let's revisit this. And so I went through the hanky code. I think it started with like 10 or 12 different colors but it's now grown to I think like 70 different and like it's ridiculous like there's like mosquito netting and like a cupid doll and they all mean these like ridiculous things so I, I went through and I kind of stuck to the uh just the main the main the main 70 or the main 60 uh and so I did sort of what the top would say and what the bottom would say and then I started going through the history of um, consumer culture and pulling out these um, slogans and, and matching the slogans with whatever that particular kink or preference was. And so you have, and some of them, I mean, it, 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 there's a cheeky, how do I say this? There's a, there's, there's a, uh, I'm using humor to sort of talk about something that's a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. So when you first look at the work, when you look at the masks, and when you look at the, the hankies, you go, oh, they're, they're fun, like they're, they're cute or whatever. But underneath that, I'm sort of talking about this idea of releasing all men from the need to be like what is our idea of masculinity, right? And so all of a sudden, like if you take a, if you put a, you know, the straight man who's a hunter and you put that hunting, the, the balaclava on his head, but it has like glitter drag queen makeup on, like you're sort of emasculating that person. 
Um, and in that, does that make that person less of a man? Right? And I think that there's that threat there that like I'm not being seen as a man. Um, so there's, there's that piece. Um, and then what I'm also doing with the corporate culture is I'm making this commentary that within queer culture, um, when we had this, this sort of the beginning of the gay or queer civil rights movement, um, corporations all of a sudden saw like, hey, let's support this. That's the right thing to do. But there's also corporations who are just like leveraging this social issue to uh, create visibility for their own brand. Like, aren't we a great bank right. for supporting or like, right. you know, like Visine for the gay in you after right. you partied or something, right? And so because of that and because brands are so concerned with their public image, what happens is the events that maybe it was part of gay culture um, get sort of disnified, right? Mm -hmm. All of the more sex positive aspects of gay culture are, are not supported or sort of kind of pushed under the rug. And it's like, hey, look, we have some drag queens and maybe like a muscle guy. And that's sort of what, that's the, the representation that you get of, of gay culture. And there's sort of much more below the surface of that iceberg. And so I'm sort of making a commentary on that. Like there is no um, Pfizer fisting float, right? <laughs> like, and so I looked at all of these particularities, right? And I, and I thought, let's do some really cheeky takes on it. And so uh, like, there's, like there's a brown hanky, which is for people who are into poop. It's called scat. And so I did, I did two, the brown hanky, like what the top says and what the bottom says. And um, on one it says, finger licking good. And on the other it says, uh, it's the Pillsbury ad, and it says, nothing says love and like something from the oven. And, <laughs> right? Or there's the yellow hanky, which is into somebody who's into water sports. And on one side it says, um, I can't remember what the first side said, but the other one says, I can't believe it's not butter. Uh. Right? And so uh, there's like a, a Holstein one. It says, got milk. Right? So, and, and the thing is, is that what I like about the work is that if you don't know about the sort of the gay subculture, they are interesting. It's, done, it's an embroidery project. Yeah. It was something I hadn't done before. Um, those sorts of aesthetics are used within sort of queer art making, particularly with fiber arts. And it was something I wanted to explore for myself, that skill set of being able to actually embroider. But there's also a commentary there. So there's like this idea of corporate culture or consumer culture and these brands and brand identity literally sewing their identity onto a part of gay culture that is disappearing and is not being supported. Hmm. So that's sort of, th those are the things that I hope that when people read, there's a, with the, the exhibition, you can enjoy it for its color and its glitter and its, uh, Fun. its, its funness. It's very playful. It's a very playful show. Um, but there are some, uh, it's driven by some sort of uh, more serious considerations. Right. So to have the courage, the character to want to bring these topics to the light to talk about mm -hmm. this, has this been something that you were just born this way? You always wanted to do this or did you, did you build yourself to be the type of artist that goes in, that wants to challenge, that wants to expose and show another side? that wants to go into a hunting store and, you know, have a little uh, engagement. Right, there. right. Like I think, I think, it, it does, I think there's a good story and I think a, a lot of other queer people might identify with this is that we, you know, as a queer person, you learn to sort of hide, to covet, to, to lie, to hide your identity right at a young age not so much maybe now i mean i'm sure that i live in i live in downtown toronto in a very gay yeah, very liberal very bubble in north right bay. I, i'm um, sure in places but, like north bay or capiscasing right. where i'm from or yeah. you know these smaller towns so so i think there's there's a bit of there's i think there's a bit of not a backlash but it's sort of like payback's a bitch and it's <laughs> like you know what now that i'm out and now that i know that i have a place that i can that i can go to that i know supports me i now can say okay i have this whole there's like this whole um, ilk of people who are creative people who are academics who are um, culture makers who are like James, go do that. That's amazing. And that gives you that sort of strength that, you know, you have this network of people behind you who want to support that work and say, yeah, you know what? Go say that. 
Yeah. You know, you go, Helen, you go tell yeah. them, right? <laughs> and so, so it's nice to, and it's really nice to show this work for the first time here in North Bay in my hometown. That's right? cool. Talk about like, full circle. It, it we feels, started about full circle, yeah. right? It feels, it feels good. It feels, it feels nice to come back here to present work. Um, that, like I said, is decidedly gay. Yes. Um, but one of this is an interesting thing too. Is through my work. So I also do painting of of cities. Yes. Um, I, Amazing I, maps. If you haven't seen these yeah, maps, go. I've done. I did. Where a do we find you? Where do people who are listening to this right now, if they're googling you? I have my own website. Yeah. You can, you can, you can buy the work on my website, <laughs> or you can contact me there. It's I am James Fowler. I am James com. Fowler. Cool. Yeah. So not, not to interrupt, but no, that's carry cool. on. So now you're back. Um. So 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 I'm so I'm back. Um, so you had people who really supported you, kind of to, to give you the strength to come out there. But I'm sure a show like this here could do the same for others. Oh, absolutely. Like now you're absolutely. in a leadership type right, role. Right. Right. It's amazing how that fearless. happens. How there's like you spend part of your life like struggling. I want to be this. I want to be this artist. And uh, I want, you know, that exposure. And then all of a sudden you have, like I, I'm working with the Art Gallery in Mississauga right now for like this queer art mentorship program. And they contacted me and they said, we think you'd be a great mentor. And I'm like, but I still want mentors. <laughs> you know, I still want people to help me. And I have a great support network of people who believe in my work. Um, and it's really nice that there's this younger generation of uh, sort of young 20 year olds that are coming through and through all the contacts that I've made in my career that I can go and help other people. And I think that one of the things that I think a lot of queer people have learned is that as somebody is reaching back to give you sort of that leg up or that hold pull you up, that you have to remember to reach back and that other people are behind you who still need help and that you that's your responsibility. And it's something that I take personally and I want to do so. I follow you on TikTok. If you don't follow him on TikTok, you have to go. Now, I know you you are primarily an artist, a maker, a doer. You have your practice. Right. But you also teach. And yes. you teach how the art mixes with social media. Right. You talk about yes. this connection. Yes. And I follow you on TikTok and you are hilarious. Oh, and, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you get a lot of attention too, right? right? Like you're, you're, you're hitting a uh, chord. It's which okay. You? I mean, I've got like 20,000 followers and counting, which is good. I mean, I don't have but a when million did you followers. Start? Uh, June of, um, at the end of May of this year, of last yeah. year. So in six so, months, so it's just over six months. So. Yeah. So it's just the beginning. It's just it, the beginning. It really is just yeah. the beginning yeah. of that app. Like it's starting right. to be adopted now, but I love the way you're using it. Right. The, one of the things that's interesting that I have learned about social media apps is there's obviously the various platforms have various algorithms, um, AI that they operate with. Um, and many of them, you can game them a bit by um, asking questions. Something I teach is um, if you ask somebody a question as opposed to give a statement, you create an opportunity for engagement with people. So if I say, I love this coffee, that's great. But if I say, I love this coffee, what kind of coffee do you like? We can now engage in a whole conversation about coffee. And maybe I've done a whole series of maps that are based on coffee shops around the world or something. So you can leverage your questions um, to start conversations and pull people into great conversations maybe that have to do with your own work. And so that's what I've done both on Facebook um, and on Instagram is that, you know, it, these are prompts for maybe people that don't know what to talk about. You know, I mean, I think the, the number one thing that happened on Facebook was I asked people, um, the names of their grandparents, which I think is an interesting conversation. You think of like mm. the sort of the various uh, ethnic diaspora around the, around the world, and it's like these are names. Some of them I haven't heard, or some of them are like really old names, uh, and it's really interesting to hear like these sort of names. And I think I had like 500 plus responses in in a day. So um, yeah, engaging people with questions, and so that's that's a nice little it works right there. <laughs> How has this pandemic rocked your world, or not? How, how's it been? How are you managing this? Um, I've been good. <laughs> yeah? yeah, you know, uh, we, we, I think you know, a lot of people have struggled with mental health, and I'm not going to lie. I think January of last year, I had moments where, um, you know, four or five days in a row, I woke up and I'm just like, I'm not happy. I have my coffee, and I'm like, I'm, I can't do this. I'm going back to bed. Um, uh, but uh, I, one of the good things that happened during the, end, the beginning of the pandemic is because people were at home. They were looking at their bare walls and they were like, we need something. So the beginning of 2020, 2020 I had p 
people calling me saying, can I get artwork? I need something yeah. bright. And because my work is so bright and cheerful, particularly in the winter, and that's yeah. why I'm excited that this exhibition is happening now is like people need a yes. little bit of color in their life and so like there are 54 flags or 54 hankies and eight of the masks and they're all brightly colored and so being around bright colors and stuff like that has really sort of helped me through it I also do um, a thing for myself at the beginning of every year. I do a goal setting. People are like, oh, what was that called? Like the things that you're not going to do the next year, your resolutions. Yeah, yeah. I don't do <laughs> resolutions. I mean, I turned 50 this year. I'm like, I don't do resolutions, but I do set myself up for success for the year by setting goals. What is it that I hope to achieve this year? And I say, okay, I want to do this by the James, end of the I year. I want you to tell my audience what what those goals are? I want to know your goals. Oh this my year, so goals! We can hold you. Yeah, I want to like, hold me one. hold me accountable. Yeah, I want, yeah, not uh, just hold you accountable. I'm but working I want on a see book. I'm working on a, a fiction book, and oh. I want to I want to be able to have like a kind of a a, a rough draft of it. Um, that would I, be your first book. It will it will be my first. Yeah, like it's just it's it's a it's this this I you know again ruminating on it. Um, I do have an outline for it, uh, so I have a couple of people that it's a slow process. I mean, you, you, your life is only so long, right? So you kind of you go from like, okay, what's what do I want in ten years, and then work back, and then literally you can go, okay, what do I want to have done for this year? And like every single month, you have like, you what it is down. it that I need to do? You break it down into reverse smaller engineering. pieces. Reverse engineering. Reverse engineering. Yeah, like it's a work back plan. Exactly. And people don't get that, and so people go, oh, I want to do this, or like they have really vague things, like, oh, I'm going to be better to myself this year. Well, what does that look like, yeah. right? And so, so I want to. I, I would like to. What two? Two of my big goals. I am showing the ten by ten photography uh, exhibition. This will be the last of my ten years. Um, I've produced ten books. I have worked with a hundred queer Canadian photographers, and collectively, we've done a thousand portraits of queer Canadians in the arts. That's a nice, like, a chunk of. That's amazing. Uh, I just an got achievement. goosebumps. Just, um, that's a lot. So, of, that so finishing that is a goal for this year. Um, I would like uh, the. I, I'm showing fifty four of the hankies here in North Bay, but I'd like to complete the entire collection for this year. Um, also, I'm working on a project called Capital Cities, which is 179 paint, small paintings of uh, capital cities from around the world. So I have 50 to do this year. Uh, this is not going to happen until I think 2025, uh, in which time I'll put out a book, a big coffee table book of the work. So. Lots of things happening. That is <laughs> a good list. And I'm amazed, uh, as I've been doing these interviews with artists and people who are making and doing things, what has really made itself clear to me is just the discipline it takes. Like everybody, you know, we all want freedom, right? right? We all want to, to be able to go places, see things, experience things. Right. But really it's the discipline and the long-term view that allows us to then have that freedom. And mm. everybody I talk to that has a practice, that is making, that's doing things, I'm always amazed I asked Rod Carley, a local writer, how long, what's the process to write your, your book? He's like, oh, four years, like four or five years. And when he said that at first, I was like, yeah, but that's a lot, like that's a lot yeah, of work. I don't know if people year. realize what goes into those little paintings right. or these ideas as, you, as you're talking about, well, this workshop led to that workshop that led to this project right. and these ideas mixing. It's a lifetime. It's a lifetime it is. of... It is. And I think what's interesting is I think a lot of artists play the really long game. And the really long game for artists, for me anyway, I think when I was young, I'm like, I want to be famous. I'm like, I want to make really good art. And I figure that if 100 years after I'm dead, that my work is on someone's wall and they enjoy it, then I win. Like, guess what? My that's work is going to endure, line. right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's really important to all artists is to play that long game. And it's probably why the philosophy, the, the idea behind what you're saying is so crucial, mm -hmm. is so important. Like the, the, what catalyzed, it's not just about, you know, the color or even the design, but, right. but what are we saying about our time here? Right. I think a lot of, you know, it's, what's really interesting is I love, I really appreciate artists who um, come from the arts from outside the arts. So for example, I have a friend who's actually from North Bay, Sean Stewart, um, who um, uh, is a dentist and he and his wife went to South America in I think like this like renovated um, FedEx truck and did like a dentist without borders but he's also an artist and so he's now being able to set himself up 
to, to make art. And I think what's really important is for artists to find something to say, yeah. right? There's certainly, you need to have that technical skill. You need to have those connections, but I think you need to really find your voice. What is it that's important to you? What is it that like that you, what comment do you have? And I think mm. that really only comes with with time lived on the earth, right? Oh, that, that you find that voice and yeah. what's really important. And so for me, taking work, and that's the whole sort of under the umbrella of Yasify, is to continue to look at places where toxic masculinity is fostered yeah. and then take up space there and see what happens. What happens when you, when you culture map queer culture onto you know, um, private schools? Right, that, that culture of private schools, yeah. right, where young boys are there and like toxic masculinity is running rampant, right? And so, so it's, it, I have lots awesome. more. To, I, have, oh, I, love, <laughs> I love that you're here, that you're doing this, that it's you're nice coming back here. to North Bay, uh, and that you're teaching uh, all of us right. about these biases we might have or mm -hmm. these, these lenses that might. I, I keep. Art to me is when somebody is able to shift the way I see the right, world. Right. To shift, it's you know? it's a disruption. Like what I'm doing is these are art interventions, right? It's right. taking something and changing it in a way that gives you a new way to look at it and new considerations yeah. that to, to think about. The show, by the way, it runs uh, here uh, at the Nova Space yeah. here. Uh, 176 Lakeshore. 176 Lakeshore. Um, and it, it opens this Saturday, yeah. um, and I believe it's open to the public for yeah, the month. Really it sure. runs until the 18th of February, so I hope people can come I and check it out. I think people will come check it out. I think people will really enjoy it. If you were to point people to three artists right now, contemporary artists living, people that are doing stuff that you find interesting, mm -hmm. where would you direct them? Three go channels. to TikTok. Just go to TikTok. <laughs> go to TikTok and search the art. Uh, contemporary art. There's like lots of lots of really amazing stuff there. Yeah. Like like the I, 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 I can't really I can't think of somebody off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. But there's so much stuff I know. that's like just like weirdo stuff. So stuff. Like if somebody's not on TikTok, what is it that we like about TikTok? Right? What is it that TikTok is capturing right now? That's because Darren here. Darren is in this show. He's I, we, we always have to get Darren in the show here somehow. But Darren, and we were laughing the other day because we we're like, yeah, when all of a sudden TikTok is just the funniest, right. it's the most entertaining, like it's just happening there, you know? There's a, you know, I think there's it's something it's, happening. The what thing I, I think a lot of people like TikTok is that it is current. It's a, it's a rea often a reaction to what's happening. Like it, it's culture know, hacking. I, I, it's, it's culture hacking. It's, it's the news before the news. If you want to know what's happening it, within like any, any topic, so it could be what's happening with um, um, uh, indigenous activism in Canada, you're going to find about that right from the ground, yeah. from people, right? It, it democratizes news and information, yeah. but it also democratizes the entertainment space. So someone who is funny yes. and doing funny things, you can see that directly from their account and yeah. the way, I mean, we don't get the creator fund in Canada, um, but people can support artists who are doing things like that. And by likes and comments and stuff, they get like a little, yeah. it's like a micro payments. And, and if you have enough followers, you can kind of, they actually can make a, you know, a little bit of money from it on the side. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, I think I, I grew up in a in a generation that watched television, and I, I grew up with the Sesame Street like gang, right? And so there's like like that like 10 second uh, uh, attention span, like it's really short, and so you can make something that's seven seconds or a minute or 30 seconds or whatever, and depending on, you know, there's like there's a great like the uh, the proptologist who's on there, he does this whole, he works in New York City and he does all this stuff about, um, his name is Jay Duckworth, he's freaking amazing. Uh, and he just talks about like props that he's made and like the history of props. So there's like really great information. Yeah. And then you have other people who are just like doing like bananas, gonzo, creative things yeah. that are like, you're like, what? I don't even know what that is, but. Would you describe yourself as an optimist? Uh, realist, uh, a, a realist, pessimist, no, not a pessimist. no, you know, it's funny, not a pessimist. As a, and, I, and I, and I don't know whether this is like part of being queer, but I spent 
<laughs> I spent my 20s like crying, like just like, m- like miserable. I hate everybody. I spent my 30s being Would I have being known angry? that if I met you in your 20s? Maybe Would not. I felt, Maybe no. not. Maybe no, not. Because you but, probably... But this is the thing. It's like, you know, we all learn our life lessons as, as, as we need to. And I think, you know, somebody when I was turning 40, I spent my 30s sort of being angry, like political and really angry about everything. And then someone I think uh, in my late 30s said, you know, at 40 you have the face you deserve. And I thought, am I gonna am I gonna be a am I gonna be like this scowly face yeah. person? Uh, and I think you have to do the work on yourself. I mean, that's that's part of your own mental health, right? Mm-hmm. Is like really think about what's important to you, and do things like you know people will maybe sort of make fun of people who do like a gratitude journal. Like do whatever it is that you need to do, and have go into the world with that intention. Like yeah. I. There's enough shitty people in the world. There are enough assholes it's and there are enough that. miserable people in the world. I don't need to be one of them. Right. Right. I don't need to be sort of toxically positive like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm sorry that your parent died. But guess what? They're in yeah. a better place, you know. But, um, but th- choose what vibe you're going to project. Yeah. And why, then like, do wh- it. Why be a dick? Yes. <laughs> I mean. Why be, why be negative? Uh, and you know, and and I've met people like that who are just like they're soul sucking. Where like you yeah. like, hey, what about this? And they're just like, I can't do that. I can't yeah. do this. And like, yeah. and it's just about you know. I think about it's a it's a shift you make. Like, you know, is that a problem or is that a challenge? Mm-hmm. And I think if you can make that shift and be yeah. like, I'm gonna challenge myself to do this or get this done or yeah. whatever it needs to be done. And and, and sometimes so, the most important, most valuable lesson is right in that challenge. Absolutely. Right. That's where the real opportunity Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And every year, you know, when I set these goals, it's about, you know, um, celebrating your successes, mm-hmm. but also reflecting on the challenges that you've had to overcome mm. and recognize and be proud of those things. Like whether they are, you know, you took the wrong turn in life, you can always turn back and go a different way. And I think that that's, uh, that's something to hold on to. That's a beautiful, beautiful note to end it on. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for being who you Thanks. are and Thank coming you. back Thanks to North Bay and, and bringing <laughs> that light, bringing that, that depth and bringing that message. And I hope it inspires people to come in and see it and connect to it and reach out to you. Yeah, yeah, by all means. If somebody wants to talk about what I'm working on or if they've got an idea and they want to sort of flesh it out, I'm more than happy to to help out or participate. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for tuning in. Please subscribe. Go follow James Fowler, the one and only. I am James James Fowler Fowler. Art. James Fowler Fowler Art Art on Instagram. On Instagram (laughs) and TikTok if you want to laugh. Oh, it's more fun with bears. But I think he... On on TikTok, it's more fun with bears. And I like how you you tease your friends on on TikTok. You go right in with the Zoom and you you like kind of tease your friends. (laughs) I hope one day I'll be the butt of that joke. Yeah. You never know. Maybe. You never know. You said butt. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks again. Thank you. Take care. Bye.